Hey guys, Raf here, and we have another 15 minute kin stretch routine. And today it's all about the knee. I find a lot of times when people come to me, they always have some lack of tibial rotation. So what we're gonna focus on is a lot of tibial rotation for this kin stretch. And this is going to help you squat better, walk better, run better, anything that you can imagine with the lower body. This guy right here, if you don't have adequate tibial rotation, plays a huge role. So to get started, we're gonna start with some knee cards. So we're gonna start with our right side and pay attention really carefully on this one. You're gonna take your right arm through the right leg. Your left hand is now gonna hold your right hand and you're gonna kinda of clasp it together. Now the next part is gonna drive your toes up towards your face. And what this does is locks out the ankle. If I have it out here just kind of hanging out, I'm not gonna get true tibial rotation of my knee. So I need to drive my foot up to lock out this ankle joint to have no movement here and a lot of movement here. And what you'll see, I'm gonna to try to give you a front um, position is tibial rotation is this and this. If you pay attention to this kind of section of my knee, you can actually see how it rotates back and forth. So we're gonna start off with some knee cars. So left hand, right hand together. And we're also gonna add knee flexion that's in this position right now and knee extension because tibial rotation also plays a role with flexion and extension. So hands together, toes up towards the face. We're gonna rotate right, extend, rotate left, and back down. And then we're gonna reverse it up, rotate right, back down and that's one. I'm gonna do five of these, nice and slow. And always thinking of rotating back down. If you lose this position of the ankle, it's gonna kinda of look like this. You're not really gonna get anything. The moment I lock this out, this can move freely. It's gonna take some practice, even the people I work with in person, this is a hard thing to grasp for them to get started. Let's go one more. Pretty sure we've done five, but no. But good luck. And good. Now we're also gonna do ankle cars because a lot of times when it comes to the knee joint, the ankle influences the knee joint. So we're gonna be in a similar position. The right arm is still through the right leg, but this time your left hand's gonna go on your right shin and your right hand's gonna go into the forearm. This is called a Kimura lock from Jiu Jitsu, meaning your knee joint and hip joint's not gonna go anywhere. So from here, we're gonna think of drawing a big circle with the ankle. I always utilize the analogy that my toes are a pencil trying to draw a big circle. As we do our ankle cars, if there's any position where you feel there's like a a jagged position, try to go slow through it and breathe through it. The slower you go, the more information is sent back to the brain of what the environment is surrounding that joint. And now let's switch directions, nice and slow. We're breathing. Perfect, so we're gonna start with our pails and rails. How that's going to work with the knee is similar to that position of driving the foot up towards the ceiling. We're gonna go into tibial rotation just like this, and now you're gonna take your right hand and place it on the inside of that right foot. You're gonna take your left hand through the leg and loop around that forearm, and this is gonna give you leverage to take your entire knee into more tibial rotation. As we hold this, you wanna think of getting some sort of stretch. For everyone, it's gonna feel a little different. You might feel it on the inside of the knee, you might feel it on the shin, but if you feel a stretch somewhere here, we're on the right path. So as we hold this at the top of the two minutes, when I tell you to go, you're gonna take this foot and drive it this way into your hand. But because you've locked this position out, is not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna start at 10% effort, 30, 50, and then max effort. After that, when I tell you to go, we're gonna try to get off this hand, so you're gonna drive this way. So worst case scenario, when I tell you to go, you push this way, and then when I tell you to go again, you're gonna go this way. 
So we're gonna hold here for another 90 seconds and we are just breathing. For some people, they might even feel a stretch here, kind of where the fibular head is. And anytime we do pails and rails and we find a position to stretch, every single person I work with, they're like, okay, where am I supposed to feel it? I always tell them, well, will you tell me where you feel it? Because your line of tension is gonna be different than my line of tension. Right now, I feel a lot of stuff back here, which tells me that that's where I need to work a lot more of. Whereas maybe somebody has tension here because there's something else going on around that knee joint. Let's keep breathing. Another 30 seconds and we're gonna start pushing this way. If you can't get this hand around, you can just use this one arm and kind of leverage your forearm. And you're gonna have to find what kind of works for you because everyone has different anatomy and everyone's in a different stage of their mobility journey. So even if this doesn't feel good, like you can go into a straight position with the other leg. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you get that stretch. All right, so in five seconds, we're gonna drive this foot this way at 10% effort and go start pushing in. That feels good, go to 30% effort. That feels good, let's go to 50. You should start feeling a little bit more difficult. And if this feels good, when I tell you to go, you're gonna go max effort. So in three, two, one, start pushing. Push, push, push. And he's off. See how my like foot just kind of naturally fell in? Now I feel a really deep stretch in that fibular head. Now when I tell you to go, we're gonna go in the opposite direction. I'm gonna try to get my foot off this hand. In three, two, one, go. Left, get it up, lift. Lift, lift, drive off, drive off. In five, four, three, two, and one. Relax, slowly come out of that. Move it around a little bit, and now we're gonna challenge that knee joint. So we're gonna go into our hip 90-90, and I want your right leg behind you. When I tell you to lift, we're going to drive our toes up towards the ceiling. And this is literally that tibial rotation that we were focusing on earlier. So when I tell you to go, one, keep this locked out and try to lift it up as high as possible. So in three, two, one, and lift, lift, lift. Try to get as much height as possible, lift, and back down. Watch this section of my knee, how it rotates. That's that fibular head rotating. And go, lift, lift, lift. Get more, more, and back down. One more time, and lift, lift. Pay attention of how high that foot is. Lift, 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 and relax. Because the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a block or something that is high enough where you're gonna feel that. If this is a little too high, and again, for me, it is kind of a little too high because it's kind of digging into my toe. What I'm gonna do instead is grab my little foamy. If you guys don't have one of these at home, highly suggest you get one. Got this off of Amazon. And the reason why I like the foam is that it's almost is the same height as a yoga block, but because it has a little bit of give, I can rest this nice and easy on there. So when I tell you to go, we're gonna try to lift from this position, which is our end range, which is gonna be very difficult. So in three, two, and one, try to lift. Lift, lift, I'm squeezing my hands to create more tension. Lift, and relax. It's a small little mo motion. And lift, drive, drive, lift, lift, and relax. And again, lift, 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 and relax. Let's go one more time, and go. Lift, 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 and relax. Slowly come out of that. We're gonna to go to the other side. So, just like the other side, we're gonna start with our knee cars, ankle cars, could then go into our pails and rails and do our little lift off. So, left leg bent. This left leg can be like this or straight out, whatever feels more comfortable for you. Your left arm's gonna go through. You're gonna lift that hip up, left hand holds the right hand, toes towards the face, and then we're gonna to rotate to the left extend 
rotate in, back down. Extend, rotate out, back down. If this is tripping you up and you're kind of confused of why and where I'm supposed to rotate, you can stay down here and just rotate left, rotate right. And get this very efficient and then you can try adding extension and flexion. And sometimes this is where you just need to live and breathe to learn the motion, to understand that this knee joint can actually rotate back and forth. And good. So now we're gonna do our ankle car. So right hand on the left shin, left hand on the forearm. From here, we're drawing that big circle. Nice and slow. You might hear my ankle popping. <laughs> I got a lot of scar tissue on this left ankle. You can even see that when I rotate this way, it's a little shaky, which just tells me I need to slow down even further to really get some good feedback and switch directions. And you'll notice that anytime you've had a traumatic injury on a certain section of your body, you'll find more of that neurological lagging as I call it. And that's just your nerve system going like, what the hell's going on? I don't know if you should be there. And good. All right, so now we're gonna go into that tails and rails position. So, have that foot up towards you. Take that left hand on the inside of your left foot, rotate out, and you can even play around with how much flexion you put your leg in or how much extension you need to actually feel a stretch. And that's another thing that you can do, you know, like, Today you're doing it in this position. Tomorrow you can do it in this position. The next day you can try doing it in this position because your knee flexes and extends and also has tibial rotation. So you can get really specific of where you want to train tibial rotation. And that's the cool thing of kin stretch is that once you really understand how the body moves, then you can really play around with different positions, angles specific to your goals, to your sport, to your exercise that you're trying to get better at. So we're holding this for two minutes. And like I said before, you can just use the one arm or you can come through and really crank on this guy. I know for a lot of people, this position is kind of a little aggressive, uncomfortable, and they just prefer holding here. It just takes a lot more effort. Um, the arm sometimes can get tired. So what you can do is actually find an edge of a door or corner of a wall and kind of leverage your hand underneath it put a kettlebell here so you don't have to constantly crank on it but find what works for you and as we're holding just deep deep breaths breathe keep breathing and think of almost melting that knee away You might find that this side has different feeling compared to the other one, and that's okay. You can also play around with where this hip is, so you can bring it in closer, further out. You might feel that stretch in a different position. All right, in 10 seconds, we're gonna drive this way. So in three, two, one, start pushing this way at 10%. Let's go to 30. 50. If that feels good, we're going to go max effort and go push, 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 and ease off. See how I kind of just melted further into it. And then when I tell you to go again, we're going to go in the opposite direction and go drive. Try to get that foot off your hand. Drive. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. In five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Slowly come out of that. All right, so we're gonna go into our 90-90, and we're gonna do those lift-offs. So drive the toes towards your face, and lift. Drive, 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 and back down, and lift. Drive, 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 back down, and lift. Drive, 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 and back down. Perfect. Grab our little foamy block, whatever you got at home, 
This side I have a little bit less tibial rotation, so this one's gonna be challenging for me. And let's try to lift, lift, squeeze everything you got. Lift, lift, and relax. And again, lift, 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 and relax. One more, and again, lift, 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 and relax. Slowly come out of that. All right, so that's gonna conclude our 15 minute kin stretch workout for knee tibial rotation. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out, leave a comment, and make sure you just subscribe. Wow, I can't speak to this channel, and I'm gonna continue giving you a kin stretch workout every single week.